Hello and welcome to a Talmud Israeli production. Today we will review the highlights of this week's course of Daf Yomi study, Masachet Pesachim, Daf Lamed Vav through Membet, pages 36 through 42. Lamed Vav. Amar Shmuel, Lechem Oni, Lechem Shoni, Ma'alav, Dorim Harbe. Shmuel says, that when the Torah refers to the matzah as poor man's bread, Lechem Oni, it can be homiletically interpreted as bread over which many things are said, Onim, to say, many things. What are these things that are said over the unleavened bread, the matzah? So Rashi explains that on the night of the Seder, while the unleavened bread, the matzah, is physically on the table, before we eat the meal, we recite the Haggadah, the the story of the Exodus from Egypt, and we say at least the first two paragraphs of the Hallel. We'll conclude the Hallel after the meal is over, but the beginning of the Hallel is said with the matzah still on the table. So multiple things of a ritual nature, are recited over this Lechem Oni. Lamed Zayin, 37. Tana Rabbanan. We learned in a brighter. Ein ofin pat Pesach. Then the viewpoint of Beit Shammai, you're not allowed to bake thick bread on Passover. Beit Hillel Matirin, but Beit Hillel allows you to bake thick bread on Pesach. How thick is thick? Rav Huna explains, a tefach, as much as even a hand breadth, which is fairly thick, you know, between three and four inches, uh, you can make on Pesach. On what basis did he decide that a tefach was allowed? She came because we find that the showbread on the table, on the shulchan in the temple, in the Beit Hamikdash, was a tefach thick, and that was considered matzah, not chametz. So it must be possible to bake something even at least that thick. However, Rav Yosef responded to this and challenged it. Im amru bizrizin, If we say this about the showbread, which was baked by people who are diligent and careful in the preparation of this non chametz bread, then shall we say the same thing about non zrizin, people who are not especially careful? In other words, the Kohanim in the temple, when they made the showbread, they were very careful. But your average person who's making matzah for Pesach is not as careful. Also, im amru amela, if they said this about dough which was heavily worked, that the flour was sifted many times and the dough was pounded many times in the making of the showbread and the menachot of the temple, shall we say the same thing about matzah, which is baked on, on, on private premises, which is not so well worked? If we say this about wood, which was dry and therefore good for kindling a fire, which was the case in the temple, shall we say the same thing regarding a fire made on private premises where the wood is not so dry, but rather might be moist, and thus the fire not nearly as hot? If we said regarding a hot oven that it could produce matzah or non chametz as thick as a tefach, shall we say the same thing regarding a not very hot oven? And lastly, the temple oven was made out of metal, so it got very, very hot, as opposed to the ovens on private premises, which are made out of earthenware, which are not especially hot. So because of all these objections, therefore, the notion that you can make a, a bread as thick as a tefach and it still be considered matzah and not chametz has been rejected. Lamed Chet, 38. The Mishnah said... That the uh, the loaves uh, of the to- Thanksgiving offering and the wafers of a Nazir sacrifice, if you made them for your own personal usage to be a sacrifice, in Yotzeban, you cannot use them to satisfy your matzah obligation on Pesach. However, if you made them to sell in the marketplace, meaning the vendors of loaves in Jerusalem who would sell them to the pilgrims who came to the temple to make their sacrifices, those loaves the vendors could use for their matzah obligation. So the question is, why should we draw a distinction between what you made for yourself and what you made for commercial purposes? And the answer the Gemara gives is, whatever you make for commercial purposes, you have in mind. If I sell it, I sell it good. And if I don't sell it, I'll use it for my own personal purposes. I'll satisfy my matzah obligation with those wafers, with those chalot toda. Lamed 39. Tanur the following types of items cannot become chametz. And the first item listed are baked items. In other words, if something was baked and its process of, of uh, baking was completed, in other words, a piece of matzah, it cannot become chametz. As Rashi explains, once bread has been baked, even if you soak it in water, it will not become chametz. On this basis, 
a person is allowed to put matzah in their soup or in a bowl of milk to have like cereal on Pesach. However, many Ashkenazi Jews will not do this because they have the custom of gebrachts that any even post-baked uh, food item, which is a food item, liquid is certainly not, certainly not water throughout the holiday of Pesach. So if you have that old-fashioned Ashkenazic tradition, then this uh, halacha is not uh, applied in the conventional sense. However, for baseline halacha, if you take a baked item and put it in the liquid, it does not become chametz. Mem, page 40. Mishnah tells us, Ein mevashneta Pesach, lebamashken lebamay perot. You're not allowed to cook the Paschal lamb in mashkin, perot, not in uh, liquid and not in fruit juices. Uh, why are you not allowed to do this? Because you have to roast the Pesach. The Pesach must be eaten roasted. It cannot be eaten cooked. Not cooked in water, not cooked in fruit juices. However, you're allowed to baste the uh, Paschal lamb with these juices, and you're allowed to dip uh, a chunk of the meat of the Paschal lamb in these various condiments while you're eating. So the sachin, the basting, is bishat tzliato, during the hour of the roasting, and the madbilin, the dipping, is bishat tzliato, in the hour of the eating. Mem Aleph, 41. Hamavashel b'chamei teveria b'shabbat patur. If you cook something in the hot springs of Tiberias on Shabbat, you're exempt from the, the, the malacha of cooking, of, of bishul. Why? Because bishul can only be accomplished in the halachic sense if it, you use fire or a derivative of fire. However, the hot springs of Tiberias are hot because of the rays of the sun. It's the derivative of the sun. And thus, there is an exemption in the, in the Sabbath law. Pesach shevishtu b'chamei However, if you were to cook the Pascha lamb in the hot springs of Tiberias, you'd be liable. Chayav. So the Gemara asks an obvious question. Why should it be that on Shabbat you're exempt because it's not toldot ha'esh, it's not a derivative of fire? On Pesach also, you should be exempt because it's not a derivative of fire. There, what did you do wrong? The Gemara responds, well, you didn't do anything wrong in the sense of violating a prohibition. However, you squandered the opportunity of fulfilling the mitzvah of the Kuban Pesach, which must be tzli, which must be roasted. So now, since this is no longer raw, it's, a, it's been cooked, but it wasn't properly roasted, you violated the rule, the positive rule of tzli. Mem bet. 42. Here we have a funny story. The Gemara sometimes tells a funny story. Amar Rav Yehuda, Yishala Talushal of Mayim Shalanu. So Rav Yehuda said a woman sh should uh, use water for the kneading of the dough for making of matzah, only water that rested overnight. Mayim Shalanu. But the word Shalanu in Hebrew, if pronounced a certain way, can mean shalanu, our water. Our, mayim shalanu, our water. What happened? Darash Marav Matna Bepunayaya. Rav Matna came to a certain town and he expounded upon this uh, concept. The next day, all the townspeople came to him with their pitchers, with their jugs, and said, give us water, give us water. Why? Because they thought that he meant that you have to use Mayim Shalanu, our water, in making of matzah. So they came to him and said, give us water. We have to use your water. So he responded, no, 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 no. I didn't mean uh, literally Shalanu, my water, our water, but rather Mayim Shalanu that rested overnight. Because water which was drawn from the, from the spring is warm. If you allow it to sit overnight, it cools down. And you want a cool down bucket of water for the preparation of matzah that should, that should not become chametz. But what happened? He gave his lecture in Lashon HaKodesh in Hebrew, and the word Shalanu was misinterpreted, so he had to explain it in Aramaic the next day when they came with all their buckets. <laughs>